There are 18 tribes scattered across our island. We all call ourselves Malagasy, but our customs and way of life vary from place to place. Here in Mananzari, we are members of the Atambawoka tribe, the smallest tribe in Madagascar. The ocean is our lifeblood here in Mananzari. We rely on the water for everything, from fishing and hunting to plant cultivation. We are surrounded on one side by salt water and fresh water on the other. Some of our largest exports are coffee, vanilla, and a variety of essential oil crops like vetiver, cinnamon, and clove. <laughs> There are two large exporters here, and countless farmers run in there on small distilleries. In this area alone, there are more than 80 small-scale distilleries. My name is Joseph Claudius. I've been a farmer here in Mananzari for seven years now. My wife Rosine and I moved here after getting married, and we began farming coffee and rice. We have a simple life here on the outskirts of Mananzar. Each morning, Claudius feeds the chickens and prepares our tools while I fetch water and cook breakfast. We live in a small community of close family where we all take care of each other. We have a young son named Claudio. He's seven years old. He always says that he wants to be a doctor when he grows up. Claudio's education is very important to us. Up until a few years ago, we were still only planting coffee and rice, but that wasn't enough. We started planting clove trees, which provided an additional income we could use to send Claudio to school. There are no doctors this far away from the city. If someone needs to visit the doctor, it can be difficult to find transportation. We hope that by sending Claudio to school, he will someday have the opportunity to open a clinic in our area. Planting clove isn't enough to make us rich, but it does get Claudio his education and also allows us to save for the future. Many farmers live far outside of the city, and it's hard for them to transport their product to the market where they can be sold. Because of this, we've seen traders begin to appear in Mananzad, men who travel from farmer to farmer buying out their stock and taking it to the market. Middlemen are the biggest challenge. A trader might go to a farmer and buy out his stock of clove, and then sell it in the city market for double the buying price. If the farmer doesn't sell, he risks his supply spoiling, so he's forced to make a deal. Using some basic chemistry, a trader can pad their profits even further. 
for a trader, it can be immensely profitable to adulterate an essential oil. When it comes to clove, for example, there are three parts of the plant from which oil is acquired. The stem, the leaf, and the bud. All three oils contain the same chemical compounds, but the amounts of each compound vary from one oil to another. Eugenol acetate is a distinguishing compound in clove bud. Essential oil derived from the bud is naturally the most valuable, being worth double the clove stem and quadruple the clove leaf. To some buyers, high quality oil isn't a priority. In that kind of scenario, they may seek out a cheaper clove oil. The real problem comes when a customer asks for one thing and is given another. There's little access to chemical testing equipment in Madagascar, so international buyers often don't know if their essential oils are pure until they're personally tested. There are many ways to mix oils to increase profits. One method commonly used is adding synthetic eugenol acetate directly to clove leaf and clove stem in an attempt to mirror the composition of clove bud. To even a sophisticated lab it will look like clove bud oil. The difference between pure and synthetic is almost undetectable. Naturally, most sellers claim their oils are pure, and it would be difficult to prove them wrong. To give our buyers confidence in the oil we produce, we ship our essential oils to one of the only labs on the island, in Antananarivo, our nation's capital. The tests we run in this lab are not comprehensive, but it gives our buyers some base levels to go off of. When essential oils arrive here at doTERRA, we do a series of tests to confirm the purity of the oils. At the Quality Control Lab, we use an extensive protocol to ensure the purity. One of the most common tools in the industry is the GCMS, which is used to identify each individual chemical compound present in the oils. It shows the natural composition of the oil, and we also use it to check for adulteration and contamination with chemicals that are not naturally present in the oils. GCMS by itself is not enough to ensure purity. This is why at doTERRA we have additional testing that looks at organoleptic and physical properties of the oils. The last thing we do is to make sure the oils are free of contaminants, such as heavy metals, pesticides, and microorganisms. Because our sourcing team works closely with our suppliers and quality is ensured at the source, we rarely see adulteration. These farmers are at the heart of the essential oil industry. And when oil adulteration happens, it not only cheats consumers from receiving the pure oil they expect, but also these farmers that work so hard to produce it. <laughs> 